Okay, everybody, welcome again. And today we are going to look at the Cuban Missile Crisis. As usual, make sure you have your textbook, you have your notes, and make sure you have slept enough before we look at Cuba. And why is it a missile crisis? Okay, crisis is, of course, something terrible that is going to happen. And this is, of course, the closest that the world has ever gotten to blowing up in nuclear winter. The question is, of course, why? Okay, and so firstly, before we look at Cuba, we must know where is Cuba. So let's have a look at the map. This is us in the island of Singapore. We will zoom out and we have Asia. Now, where are we used to? We know that up north here, we have Korea and China, right? Which is what we have been looking at in the Korean War. Um, to the west, we have Europe, which is where we looked at World War II. So if you zoom out so far, we've been looking at the Asian and European continent. But where we are going to go now is across the Pacific Ocean. We look at the United States and where we are going is this area over here in the Caribbean. Okay, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, that's why we're looking at. Okay, so this... It's the island of Cuba, right south of the United States. That is what we are looking at, okay? Now, how is this chapter organized? It is organized into three main parts. Um, 3.1, according to your textbook. Uh, in your textbook, this is 3.1, this is 3.2, this is 3.3. And I have uh, worded it in something digestible for you. So we're going to first look at what is the build-up, how it happened, and then, of course, how is the crisis resolved. Okay, so for this one, uh, this lecture is the very first introduction, so it will be a broad overview, so you have an understanding of how the story is proceeding. Okay, without further ado, uh, further ado sorry, let us begin. So uh, you will have the slides. The slides, again, are available on Google Drive. Uh, if you're not in my class, please go and get it from my classes. Okay, um, so this is where we are going to begin. Okay. So, uh, these are the questions. You have them on your notes. What is the background to the Cuban Missile Crisis? Long story short, what happened is that the Soviets placed nuclear missiles on Cuba. Because Cuba is in the American backyard, the, Soviet, uh, the Americans start freaking out. Um, there is the crisis, okay? Um, I assume by this point, you've already read your textbook. If you haven't, please stop and go and read your textbook first, Okay? So, why are there tensions in the first place? Okay, and how did these tensions become part of the Cold War? So, before we can do that, we must look at this idea of a bipolar world order, right? Here, so when we're talking about poles, we are talking, think of it, North and South Pole. Okay, um, you know magnets, right? Uh, so, when I have North Pole and South Pole, they don't like each other. They're going in different directions. That's how I get this idea of bipolar, where the world is split into two. Okay? And we know we have the Western Bloc and the Eastern Bloc. Now, so if you don't want to use Eastern Bloc, a more simple way to put it is put the Communist Bloc. Okay? Always remember to capitalize communist because it is a proper noun. Okay? You can also say, um, but here, if you don't want to say the Western Bloc, you can say the West. Again, make sure you capitalize. All right. So we know that there are some reasons why they don't like each other. We have different ideologies. What are their ideologies? Basically, we have democracy versus communism. Okay, you should know this. Okay, uh, they have different economic systems, right? They have capitalism versus communism. We also know that communism is uh, economic system, okay? Different political systems, okay? Where one man, one vote versus there's only one party, okay? And conflicting security and geopolitical interests. What does this mean? When we are talking about security, we are usually talking about military concerns. Okay, geopolitical, when we talk about geopolitical, we're talking about how your political influence is being spread out across the globe. Okay, how you can influence the rest of the globe according to your power. Okay, so now we know that the USA and the USSR, they are fighting over this. Uh, we know that there are two superpowers. Okay, this is the framework. And um, the time frame that we're going to look at here, the Cuban Missile Crisis is in 1962. Okay, I'm going to use the short form as uh, CMC. So it happens in 1962. When you are writing your essays, you can write it as the crisis. Do not write CMC. Okay. Now, we must remember that uh, this is not the only Cold War confrontation. There is a build-up. 
Okay, so um, here you see the word throws. Throws means in, in the midst of it, in the struggle. Okay, before that, we already know after the World War II, we have the Berlin blockade. Um, sorry, there's a typo here. It's 1948. Okay, we have Korea. The Berlin Wall was built. Okay, and that is the lead up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. What is the point of showing you all this? I'm trying to say that there's increasing tension. Okay, so the takeaway for you, ladies and gentlemen, is that the Cuban Missile Crisis does not stand alone. It is a product of increasing tensions between the two superpowers. Okay, and what are the two uh, superpowers concerned with? Okay, we know that both sides have nuclear weapons. Okay, and nobody wants to lose the arms race. Now, the arms race, uh, it's the nuclear arms race that we are talking about here. Okay, and if you look at the USA, it says that they are worried about the USSR expanding their sphere of influence. Well, guess what? The USSR is also doing the same thing. Okay, now there's a new word here, brinksmanship, which we will look at in time to come. Um, please go and check the glossary in your textbook. Okay. So what is the big deal about having this bipolar world order? Now, if I have a bipolar world order, it then means that I am trying to expand my influence. We know this as a sphere of influence. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, this simple diagram. Red means communist. Blue means the Western Bloc. Green, in this case, is the non-aligned, um, which we refer to as the third world. Now, as we have discussed before, we know that third world is not actually economic, which is what it is used for nowadays, but it is political. And we know why, because of the Truman Doctrine, the Marshall Plan, things like that. Okay, uh, But my point here is that it is about geopolitical spheres of influence. So if I'm blue, I'm going to spread as much blue as I can. If, I want, if I'm red, I want to spread as much red as I can. Right? We saw this in Europe. right? That's why over here, we can see that some... Uh, conflict okay but we want to draw attention to this if you look we have this little island of cuba here which is red and it is the only communist presence in the entire american hemisphere now this is going to be a problem for america okay which you really can start to see oh there are some geopolitical concerns which are going on here if i am the usa what do i do about this little red speck okay uh, we zoom in. This is what Cuba looks like. Okay. Uh, this is the land of... Uh, historically, is an area full of piracy. Very interesting. Please go and read up. Okay. Um, South America. And uh, if you look at... In East Asia, even all these different areas of the world, right? We already looked at this in Korea. We know that there is a contest for ideological supremacy. Okay. Um, and now I would like to bring your attention back to uh, South America. Let's have a look at this data set that we're seeing here. Let me uh, show you how to read the data. You can see the year from 1946 all the way to 1961. There is a progression. What does it suggest? Whatever is in this data, it is consistent across time. Okay. Um, the countries are all in South America. What does it suggest? If you look back at the map. Okay. These are all the South American countries. You can imagine that the USA is very interested in protecting its influence. Okay, we look back at this map here. Okay, imagine if this whole area here were to turn communist. That would not be good for the USA. That is why they are invested in keeping it under control. And so what do they do? Let's have a look again. Okay, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, all these are South American countries. Okay, US supported president. Okay, US backed politicians come to power. Okay, they are training Latin American police forces. Okay, um, they withhold support for free elections after they fear elections of a leftish. Leftish. Uh, basically means communist. So, hold on. I thought they are the Americans. I thought they love democracy, but they withdrew support for free elections. Hmm. Okay. So, what we see is that the USA has a history of intervention. They are intervening very much so against any kind of influence which might not be democratic. Okay, we see that they are supporting certain political figures, which will, of course, uh, 
in turn, um, shall we say, be be more sympathetic towards the USA. Okay, so um, what is the conclusion um, the USA wants to maintain political control over South America? Okay, this is important. Huh? And Cuba is in South America, so you can imagine what is going to happen. Okay, and so that is how uh, we can start to understand the relationships between USA and Cuba. Q USA is very invested in maintaining political control. Okay, so that already brings us to why Cuba is significant to the USA. Okay, um, then the next thing we'll look at is the tensions and uh, how they interact. How does this happen? Let me give you an overview. Okay, now we must think about what I just said. There is constant American intervention in Cuba, suggesting that they want to get control of Cuba, right? So there are two main interests huh, here. We are talking about political as well as economic interests. Okay, so if the Americans keep intervening, how will the Cubans respond? That is something we need to think about. Hint, not very well. Okay, what happens, of course, if you look at the next square, is that there is Cuban Revolution and this guy called Fidel Castro comes into power. Okay, Castro is uh, highly socialist. He does not like how the Americans are doing things. He launches the Cuban Revolution. He's very popular. He launches a whole new series of policies. How will this affect the USA? Okay, he is quite anti-US. Okay, so again, that is why we move to the next part. Okay, uh, the American response to Castro. How, when American economic and political interests are threatened in Cuba, how will the USA respond? Again, probably not very well. Okay, and so if America is highly aggressive and they are threatening Castro, what will Castro have to do? Castro will have to find help. He needs a friend. But the problem is there is only one person in the world who is strong enough to counter the USA. And so what will Castro do here? Okay, so that is what we are going to look at. I hope it gives you a broad overview of the whole chapter. Okay, so in the next few lessons, we will look at the uh, content details of this chapter. Okay, right, stay tuned.